Hi, welcome back to the TI-84 Plus CE student course. In this video, we're looking at using the transformation graphing app. We're going to do that by having a look at some of these details. So how to enter and use the transformation graphing app. We're going to look at the example of graphing y equals x squared with some transformation variables. We're going to look at the settings on the app and how they can use to enhance the understanding of transformation. And we're going to look at graphing multiple variables as well. Now, in some of the other videos I've done, a lot of them have been using kind of concrete examples to kind of work through some questions or some problems that you might see come up in a classic math class or exam. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be looking more at just exploring the transformations. And that's because I feel that that's where this technology uh, best comes into use is just by exploring and kind of evaluating your own understanding of the concept. So, all right, so I'm just going to get into my calculator. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is head into our apps menu. So next to the math button, uh, we've got our apps menu. And you should be able to see here, you can't actually find the transform on the, on the first screen in the applications menu. And that's because it's the very, very last thing in these applications. So the easiest way to get to the very last thing, because these menus are circular, um, is by to use the up key on the navigation buttons. And that just takes you to the very last thing there. So number... Uh, well, it doesn't have a number, but that very last one uh, is there, transform. So we're going to press enter. And from here it comes up and you just press any key on here to get rid of that screen. So I'm just going to press enter again. Uh, now from here, if I go into my function editor, so that y equals button, you can see here it comes up and it says transformation graphing app. So that tells me I know I'm definitely in the app now. And there's two functions here, which kind of look like a different format to how we've seen them so far. And that's because these are the two that we can edit to add in any kind of transformations that we're interested in. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to put in is we're going to look at AX squared. So we're going to see what effect does changing the value of the coefficient in front of our X squared function, what effect does that have on the graph of our quadratic? So once I've got that up, I'm just going to go into my window settings. Um, and I can see here, all my settings look pretty good. I'm just going to change that X resolution down to 1. Um, but everything else is kind of from negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. That should do me fine for this particular scenario. Um, but the next thing I want to do as well is I want to look at what settings my transformations are in. Um, and this is really a really key feature of this application. So I'm going to keep pretty much everything the same for the moment. Um, so trail off, um, I'm going to have this on pause. Um, my A is going to start at negative 2, that looks pretty good to me. And step, that's how much it changes by, so it's changing by 1. Um, that's perfect for what I'm after. Okay, so if I hit graph now, it's going to take me into my screen. And I can see here, okay, so this is what my quadratic looks like when A is equal to negative 2. If I use my right navigation key, that's going to increase my value of A. So my next value of A is going to be negative 1. There it is there. Then my next one's going to be 0. Oh, what's happening here? I've now I've got a straight line. Uh, my next one is 1. And then 2, 3, etc. So I can see there what is happening to that graph as that value of A gets bigger. And if I move to the left, then what happens if it gets smaller? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to head up, head into the setup there. So um, you can see you've got that, that button that says set up on the screen. That corresponds again to our graph button. So if I press graph, that just takes me straight back into those application settings we were looking at before. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change a couple of things. So we're going to turn the trail on. And I'm going to make this, instead of being a play pause, I'm going to make this play. Um, and now I'm going from a negative 2 up to a maximum value of a 2. Okay, so it's, we're starting at negative 2, we're increasing by 1, and we're going up to a maximum value of 2. Um, and I'll show you what this does. So if we press graph now again, so it just computes each of these screens, and now it's going to show it as kind of like an animation of what's happening with that value of A. Now the trail, having that, that trail on setting, that leaves that imprint of the pictures that we've seen so far on the graph. Um, so that's showing each of those screens all together. 
um, and having and turning the play on that obviously means that you can see and you're scrolling through that image a bit like a little video so we can see what's happening with each of those values all right I'm just gonna um, if you want to pause this on any particular value as well you just press the enter button and that will pause it at that particular point um, and then uh, we're gonna head back into our y equals again now in my y2, I'm going to add in another quadratic with a different transformation, but still using the same variable. And that will let me look at both of those in conjunction. So now instead of having a coefficient of a in front of my x squared term, I'm going to add on a constant a onto the end. Oops, sorry, I just press squared twice then. I'll just do that again. x squared. So I'm going to add a again using the alpha key and a. I'm going to add that a as a constant onto the end. Um, now I'm going to go back into my settings again. Um, this time, because I'm graphing two functions together, I'm going to turn the trail. Well, actually, I'll show you what the trail looks like on first, um, and then I'll show you. Again, I'm going to keep A at negative 2, maximum of 2. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and we'll graph it again. Now, this time, the computing will take a little bit slow, longer just because um, you're graphing those two equations at the same time. Um, and hopefully you'll see what I mean, the, the trail in this, I don't think it adds a lot to what we're doing because it just does make the screen kind of really um, messy. There seems to be a lot going on there. So I'm just going to go back into my setup again quickly. Sorry, oh sorry, I've got to press enter to pause it first. Always forget to do that. Um, graph, again, if you can't do it, just remember you, you should just be pressing pause every time. Again, I'm going to turn the trail off now. Go back into my graph. Okay, and I can see now that looks a lot nicer to me. So um, I can see there that as my um, with my blue graph, that was the one with the coefficient, it's kind of getting narrower um, for any value of a that isn't zero. Um, so my graph's kind of getting narrower, narrower as it gets bigger. Um, and then my graph that's got the constant added onto the end, uh, it's not changing in size at all. It's just that turning point, which is going further up. Now, which would be hopefully be nice, I think, on the calculator version, so not the computer version of the calculator, but the actual physical calculator, it doesn't go quite as fast as this. Um, so you do have a little bit more time to look at what's going on on the screen. If you did want to speed it up any more, you could use the double play. That makes it go even faster. Um, but I'm not going to show you that here today because I think on my computer it will just be too fast. All right, so we're going to head back into the y equals again, and I'm going to show you now what it looks like if we've got two transformations in the one equation. So instead of having um, ax squared and then looking at x squared plus a, we're going to look at ax squared plus b. Okay, so looking at two different variables. Um, but you can only look at the transformation of one of these at one time. Okay, so then again, I'm going to go back into my window settings. And you'll notice that here, now I've got an A and a B. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to turn the play part off. I'm just going to look at one screen at a time. Um, and I'm going to keep A at negative 2. I'm going to keep B at 4 and the step by 1. So now if I go into here, that B remains constant. And we use the navigation keys. We can just scroll through A. But B remains exactly the same. Okay, if I go back into my setup, so that window again, um, again into settings. Um, if I do that, I can now highlight B and I'll highlight B. I'll start it at, say, negative 3, going up by 1, Ooh, not negative 33, negative 3, increase by 1. Um, and A is now going to be set at a value of 2. Okay, so now if I graph that from here, then I can see, okay, what happens as B increases. And I can change that one variable at a time as well and keeping A constant. All right, so just before we finish up, the last thing that's really important to mention is how you actually get out of the app while you're in it. Um, so we can, we can see across the top there, you've got that plot one, plot two, plot three, and then the quit app right on that right-hand side. So if I just might use my navigation keys to go up so that plot one is highlighted, you might have to keep pressing up a few times. And then if we use the right-hand key um, just to scroll along until we get to that quit app, and then press enter. Um, then it'll ask us if we're sure. We're going to say number two, yes, we want to quit transform graphing. Um, and now when I go back into my y equals, my um, regular function graphing editor is there. Alrighty, I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.